My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slay the Spire. I may have forgotten to mention this last episode, but in order to celebrate the game moving into full release after its early access period, I'm also going to be jumping up to doing two episodes of Slay the Spire a day as well. So hello again if you've caught both of them as they go live. Uh, time to finally get into the silent 70 HP, 99 gold. Starts with the Ring of the Snake. At the start of each combat, draw two additional cards for your opening hand. Okay, so this is Nyao. Uh, and Nyao will provide us bonuses at the start of our runs. Currently, we only have access to enemies in the next three combats have one HP as well as max HP plus seven. The Silent has difficulty with damage in her base deck. We've got Neutralize here, which applies Weak, as well as Survivor, which blocks for a little bit more than a standard Defend, but also allows you to discard a card. Uh, and then other than that, we've actually got five Defends and five Strikes. So in stark contrast, the Ironclad, who had 10 cards in their base deck, we have 12, which is going to make things a little bit more annoying initially. You've just got some really bad cards still diluting your deck until very late. Easy kill. Ooh, Crippling Cloud. Apply four poison and two weak to all enemies. Sure, let's see if we can go for a poison build. Daggers Ray, deal four damage to all enemies twice. More than happy to take that. Noxious Fumes, hell yes. At the start of your turn, apply two poison to all enemies. Just some really, really, really great pickups so far. Uh, I take Dagger Spray because I want basically the first AoE that I ever see so that I can fight enemies in AoE. Go deep on this. Stone Calendar. At the end of turn 7, deal 25 damage to all enemies. We can now be really defensive and just have Stone Calendar and Noxious Fumes take care of it. Uh, Noxious Fumes provides poison to enemies. Poisoned enemies lose HP at the start of their turn, and each turn poison ticks down by 1. So here I'm going to obtain a special relic, Pain. While it's in your hand, lose 1 HP whenever you play another card, but the special relic we get will be Warped Tongs. Every single hand, it will upgrade one of our cards. Uh, should I take that? Yeah. Upgrade Noxious Fumes as quickly as we possibly can here, as well as probably the other Poison Dealer. So if I went to the left there, I could have fought an Elite and dealt with them only having 1 HP, which would have been easy, but I want to hit a lot of rests here on the first floor so that I can upgrade a bunch of the cards in my deck, as well as this shop, so that I can remove the pain that I just included in my deck. I'll take a backflip here, draw two cards, as well as gain five block. It's like a super buffed version of a defend. Gambling chip. At the start of each combat, discard as many cards as you'd like and then draw that many. That's really good for this character because I already have seven cards in my opening hand, so... I get to be really, really picky. Alright. Looks like I will be taking a little bit of damage here, but that's okay. So one of the enemies died and made me vulnerable, which is why I ended up taking damage there. Ring with holes, quick slash, and outmaneuver. Not particularly interested in any of those. There's footwork, unfortunately. I really, really, really want footwork. So it is gain two dex. Dex improves the block that you gain from cards. So each point of dex is another point of block on each card. Footwork is way too important. I'll remove the pain later. Especially because we are going for kind of like a turtley build. Footwork is really, really important for us. So they get poisoned by three at the start of their turn. Hell yes. I'll just keep blocking. I don't need to take any damage in this combat. Oh, hell yes. So poison, or rather in particular, the Noxious Fumes has an element that I really like, another one, hell yes, uh, called inevitability. That means that eventually, just because this is in play, the enemy will die.
Right. Really would have liked to be able to play that Crippling Cloud. Shouldn't have drawn. Oh well. Got it back. I won't use the Neutralize there. It does very little damage, but I would have taken some damage to use it. Oh, just look at all that poison on the enemy. It's perfect. And now the enemy's dead next turn as well. So they're trying to sap my dex and my strength. So they also have an inevitability in that if the fight goes long enough, I'll have no strength and no dex. Uh, I don't care for any of those cards. And now we'll upgrade the other Noxious Fumes. Beautiful. So now we're looking for basically just defensive cards. And then the deck will be totally fine. That's really unfortunate. Obviously what I was looking for there were my Noxious Fumes. So on this turn, the enemy basically does 60% of your current HP. So oftentimes you want to come into the Hexagos fight with lower HP. If you intend on wanting to full block that turn, that is at least. Whew. Sorry, I've got the flu right now. Real frustrating to get the flu specifically when you extremely, extremely don't need it because you should just be working. That's okay. This fight is going to be a breeze. Yep, we got it. Hell yeah. Also, thank you, Stone Calendar, for your pitch in of 52 damage there. So we've got Malaise, Adrenaline, Nightmare. I'll be taking Adrenaline here. Gain energy, draw two cards. More than happy to have it. So here we actually don't have any energy relics offered, which is actually kind of tragic. Uh, we have the Runic Pyramid at the end of your turn. You no longer discard your hand. The Tiny House, upon pick up, gain one potion, obtain 50 gold, uh, one card, upgrade a random card, and raise your max HP by five. So it's a little bonus in a bunch of different areas, as well as the Black Star. Elites drop an additional relic when defeated. We're going to be going for that and then trying to kill as many elites as possible so that we can get as many extra relics as possible. It's going to be lovely. So I'm now looking for the path that has the most elites here. It looks like that is going to be somewhere along this line. And it only has two elites. That's unfortunate. I'm totally fine with taking the 14 here. It's basically the only way I'm going to set up to actually be able to kill them over the course of this combat. Really got to get in there quite quickly. Okay. So the mugger in the back line is going to be running away really, really soon. This turn, they're using Smoke Bomb. So there goes the Mugger in the back line to Poison. And then the one in the front line. Beautiful. So every single time they attacked me, they stole some of my money, which is why I desperately needed to kill them. So we've got an Escape Plan. Draw a card if it's a skill. Gain five block. But we've also got Deadly Poison. Just apply five poison. Upgrades to seven. Quite powerful. I'll take the Escape Plan, though. I feel like I need the defense more than anything else right now. Ooh, hell yes. That's an opening hand right there. Actually, you don't want to draw. Because I might draw the Crippling Cloud, which I want to play this turn. Excuse me. Still had to mute the microphone so that I could sniffle. Damn cold. <clears throat> I'll use the Survivor here in order to discard the Pain so that I don't get the negative effect of it for the rest of the turn, and then void to the enemy. Nothing here I'm particularly interested in. Oh my god, another Noxious... I can't, I can't. I have to get the Pain out of there. I can also buy the Noxious Fumes. Never mind, I'm taking that, obviously. Oh, hell yes! 
You were knocked unconscious, groggy, and with a throbbing head, you awaken to find yourself thrown into the center of a massive stadium with an overflowing audience of slavers, cultists, and other denizens of the city. An armored giant with a golden crown bellows at you from atop. We now begin the 4,200th combat! A gate on the opposite side opens. So I'll have no defense this turn, taking 25 damage just to get all of those up. But it should make the rest of the fight much easier for me. Great. Yeah, I should have just double struck the back, double struck rather the back line there, rather than block as much as I did. Well done, weakling! The giant mock claps whilst he riles up the crowd with exaggerated gestures. Golden confetti shower upon you. Uh, time for the real challenge. The last battle left a small opening in the Colosseum's wall. You can easily escape through there while everyone's distracted. Do you stay and fight? So we'll probably die if we stay and fight. But I'm gonna fight for victory here. I have to. I'm honor bound. I'll be using a power potion here to look for something particularly good. Thousand cuts? Yeah, sure. So we'll take thousand cuts. Footwork, noxious. Thousand cuts is every single time we play a card, it just deals a bunch of damage to everyone. Well, I say a bunch, it's one damage across. Now, I still do need to defend myself, so the Gremlin Knob is going to get more powerful over the course of this combat, which is going to terrify me. But is essential, so... Kind of just got to deal. Frontliner is already down, and Backliner is like one turn from down. Never mind, they're dead. Beautiful. Hell yeah! So... Because we won that combat, we are going to get two rare relics. We got Ice Cream, Energy is now conserved between turns, as well as Bottled Lightning upon pick up choose a skill. Start each combat then in your opening hand. I will take Adrenaline into my opening hand and then pass. Unfortunately, we're on a deadline with another Elite, which is going to be real rough. So I'm going to need to play a lot more defensively here than I otherwise might. Beautiful. I can't keep accepting damage like I've been so far. Great time for footwork to show up right there. Don't even want to accept the damage that turn. And that's the back line of dead. Front liner with him. We do apply a lot of weak to the enemies, so I could consider the heal hook there. I'm not going to take it, but I could consider it. I considered it and immediately decided not to. We definitely have to footwork escape plan. It has to be Noxious, Noxious. Oh no, not double Noxious. No, 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 no. Sorry, it was Noxious, Stab, Stab is what I should do. Alright, so this will effectively just reload the turn for me. Okay. Looks like it upgraded a different card. Weird. Shouldn't have any difference, though. So I know that footwork, then escape plan, is actually not going to draw the right thing, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. Oh, right. Now I actually can't even use the strike. So it has to be crippling cloud strike. Damn. 
So I have to kill one of those gremlins there because if they are all alive, the gremlin leader is guaranteed to attack the next turn. And that is a painful situation to be in. So that's 18 damage and five, sure. Just block again, happily. All right, all's good now. Ooh, that's a giant attack coming in. Really needed more block that turn. Okay, so we're blocking for 26 versus the incoming damage being significantly more than that. We're dead. Damn it! Quite a powerful build, but died nonetheless. We've unlocked another character, that of the defect. However, since we haven't completed a run, we haven't technically unlocked the green key for the final act. So now this is what a normal Nyaz bonus looks like. You've got two free options and then two options with negatives. The final being a negative of losing your starting relic in order to obtain the random boss relic. So I'll probably go for obtaining a random common relic here. Sure. Boot. Whenever you would deal four or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to five. Not half bad. I was definitely playing risky last... One sec as I figure out what I'm doing here. Yeah, I was definitely playing riskily in that last uh, run, I guess. I could have played a little safer, but I feel like since I'm on the lower levels of difficulty for the game right now, I should probably play a little more riskily to try and get some of the runs to be, you know... Just over the top, ridiculously powerful. All right. So we're incentivized to take a bunch of like small low damage attacks here. Especially if they multi hit, just because we have the boot. Infinite Blades, at the start of your turn, add a shiv to your hand. A shiv is a zero cost attack that exhausts when you play it. And does four damage. Not half bad. There is a whole Shiv synergy that I would really like to get into. Although I fear maybe I don't have the unlocks of the cards necessary for Shiv synergies. Cool, cool. Fire Potion will discard the Snack Oil there, which has become confused and then draw a bunch of cards. Uh, Glass Knife versus Skewer. So Skewer is an X cost card. Deals 7 damage X times, which, again, is just the remainder of your energy. We'll take that, because then I can use it to beat up a bunch of elites. So I'll take the Golden Idol here. Enemies drop 25% more gold from that event, uh, as well as lose some max HP in order to afford it. Juzu Bracelet. Normally, enemy encounters are no longer encountered in question mark rooms. So you have events, shops, and other spaces like that. It can be lovely. Perfect. Have to accept 10 that turn. Uh, I'm going to go for the Swift Potion so that I can draw. And actually, we drew lethal. Wow. I was expecting I was going to have to use the Fire Potion there as well. Bag of Marble, at the start of each combat, apply one vulnerable to all enemies. Extremely powerful. We'll take a Dagger Spray as well. Bag of Preparation, at the start of combat, draw two additional cards. It is the same as the Ring of the Snake. Our opening hand is going to be so buff. And for that reason, I decided to wake up the enemy with it. Sure, sure. even kick in a bunch more there. I'm just accepting the damage because if this fight goes long, we definitely lose to the Lagavulin. I'm going to use a Speed Potion here, which is gained five decks until the end of turn, just so that I can defend myself adequately and then kill. You also pick up the Dream Catcher when you rest. You may add a card to your deck and dash. Gain 10 damage and 10 block. Really, 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 really powerful there. 
Hell yeah. Dagger spray for the almost full kill. That's why I have AoE cards in the deck, specifically because of that. Backstab, innate. So this is a new keyword. Uh, it is the starting in your opening hand keyword. Uh, it deals 11 damage and exhausts and costs zero. So we also have the Biker Marble. So we apply one vulnerable to all enemies on turn one. So it actually does 16 damage. It's really good. Okay, I think I have the kill this turn, but I don't. Yeah, I, I have the kill if I use like a steroid potion or a fire potion, but I think they're worth more than 6 HP to me here. Anchor, start each combat with 10 block. That's really good. So we're going to be blocked for 10 already at the start of a fight. And we already have an incentive in Bag of Marbles to be attacking enemies on the first turn. So we don't have to worry about blocking. We can kind of go all out Berserker on the first turn. It's going to be lovely. All enemies down. Hell yes. Nothing there really floats my boat, unfortunately. This boss fight. This is a this is a little bit of an annoying boss fight. So the enemy's attacks here are totally scripted. On turn one, they're gonna put three slimes into my deck. Which are status cards that I'm gonna have to play, so they're just thickening up my deck, unfortunately. Uh, and then this turn does nothing. Next turn, launches a huge attack, and I have to stop that by splitting the enemy. They, when they split, or rather when their HP is below 50%, they'll split into two smaller slimes with the current HP count of the slime boss. So 47 as their HP. For that reason, I'll use an, a fire potion here so that they have less HP when they've split. Right. Also use a steroid potion there just to deal a bunch of extra damage. It looks like this is probably going to be our first boss perfect on the first floor. Because we've not... Nope, never mind. It's not going to be that unless I use this. Fine. I'll actually go for the perfect. And it's still not going to be a perfect because we can't draw our attacks for the life of us. Lame. All right. Easy fight. We'll be taking... Do I want to take anything here? You can take 1,000 cards whenever you play a card deal 1 damage to all enemies. I do actually quite like that. It upgrades to 2 damage to all enemies, which is obviously really, really powerful. So all of these are energy relics. We've got Fusion Hammer. Gain energy at the start of your turn. You can only smith at rest sites as well as gain energy at the start of your turn. All enemies start combat with 1 strength and gain energy at the start of your turn. Whenever you open a non-boss chest, obtain a curse. I'll go with the Philosopher's Stone, I think. Yeah, because we're going to be particularly aggressive, and I want to be able to pick up all of my, cur uh, my curses. Sorry, my chests. Okay, we've actually got a path with three elites here in an early shot. More than happy to take it. Sure, I'll take two damage this turn in order to almost certainly have you dead. Hell yeah. None of those really appeal to me at the moment. Our defense is going to be the next thing that we really need to work on, but if we get aggressive enough, we might not need to. All right. I won't use the potion here. That's a potion of vulnerability. It does exactly what you think it does. Just got to make sure you're dead, beautiful. That's enough. Pre-upgraded dagger spray. Yep, the deck still needs more AoE, especially because there are more AoE fights this floor and next floor. Uh, oh, hell yes. Preserved insect. Enemies in elite fights have 25% less HP. That's going to be really good because we're hunting elites. Uh, there's also bronze scales. Start each combat with three thorns, as well as the cauldron. Upon pickup, brew five random potions. I'm going to go for that. 
<clears throat> also, just cut a strike. Not particularly powerful. Alright, so... Can I kill the Centurion? Yes, I can. 15 by 4. Easy. So every time I play a card, I'm dealing 1 damage in AoE. Which means that even if I'm not benefiting from a card, I should still play them all. Hell yes. So that one damage in AoE does not get affected by the boot because the boot is only unblocked attack damage, whereas this is just an effect. <clears throat> Leg sweep, a gain two weakness, or rather apply two weakness and gain 11 block. More than happy to have a copy of it. Hell yes. In abandoned temple, you find a giant book open and riddled with cryptic writings. As you try to interpret the elaborate script, it begins to shift and morph into writing you're more familiar with. Odd, it seems to be about an ancient named Nyao. This piques your interest, and you have a general feeling of malaise. We lose one HP to continue. The Ancient of Resurrection, Nyao, was exiled to the bottom of the spire. You feel compelled to read more, but your body begins to ache. Uh, seeking vengeance, Nyao blesses outsiders, using them for her own purpose. You're now starting to feel weak and tired. Those resurrected by Nyao remember only fragments of their past selves, cursed to fight for eternity. As you open the near, or rather, as you near the final page, your old wounds begin to reopen. We get the End Caridian here. There's three different books you can get, End Caridian being one. At the start of each combat, add a random power card to your hand. It costs zero that turn. Hell yes. So we got Well Laid Plans at the end of your turn. Retain up to one card. Nice. Not half bad. Uh, I'll use a dash and a skewer here. And then I'll retain a strike. We should be pretty close to this kill really, really soon. Lovely. Goodbye, Gremlin Leader. And Ninja Scroll. At the start of each combat, add three shivs into your opening hand. We already have an opening hand of nine cards, so those three shivs don't go into my opening hand, unfortunately. I get one of them, then two of them get discarded. So I'll upgrade 1,000 cuts here. It's now twice as effective. Oh no, the shivs came first. Okay. Not sure I actually like that. Okay, y'all do y'all. 1,000 cuts strike. Dash and then skewer just for two more damage, even if has no effect there. Okay. Still pretty reasonable block that turn. And there goes the book of stabbing. Lovely. Another relic for me. More bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No more works when you spend any gold at a shop. I could take a pre-upgraded version of well they plants here in order to retain two cards at the end of a turn. Shop. Sure. Lantern. Start each combat with additional energy. Oh. Beautiful. Yes, the Forgotten Altar. In front of you lies an altar to a forgotten god. Atop the altar sits an ornate female statue with arms outstretched. She calls to you, demanding sacrifice. We'll give her the golden idol and get a special relic called the bloody idol. Whenever you gain gold, heal 5 HP. As you gently set the idol onto an altar, a cold wind swirls throughout the room. The arms of the statue begin to discolor and crumble. Your golden idol begins to dull in color and begins bleeding from its eyes. The bleeding never ceases. Remove a card from my deck or upgrade all of my strikes and defense. We have a lot of strikes and defense still left in the deck. I'm more than happy to upgrade all of those. Well, this is difficult. Obviously, I have to take the footwork. So we take Frozen Egg here. Whenever you add a power card to your deck, upgrade it. So then the footwork is already upgraded as I take it. But that broke the more bank. The more bank would have healed me for five per floor if I let it go because of the bloody idol there. Oh, well. Still really wanted that footwork. Okay, so I tend to kill the backliner here first, just because they're real, real dangerous. All 
right, get me one of my AoE cards. I, okay, you technically fulfilled what I asked, but not the spirit of what I asked. I wanted one of my dagger sprays. Dang it. Well, there it is. Easy elite fight. Hell yes. Got a ridiculous amount of relics for this point in the game. Uh, letter open on. Whenever you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies, as well as another backstab, which I'll then upgrade. The vulnerability mixed with those backstabs is just insane. Hell of a lot of damage to provide on turn one there. Real pleased. That said, this turn doesn't look like it's shaping up to be too good. Still a pretty reasonable amount of block, but the backliner enemy has stolen a card from my deck, which I now have to kill them in order to retain or regain. This enemy in the center, the Bronze Automaton, has three artifacting, which means that they negate the first three debuffs applied to them. It's really unfortunate for us. Okay. Just gonna have to double defend here. And I'll hold skill. So yeah, we're not gonna perfect this fight, but that's more than okay. We've still got a hell of a lot of damage. We'll be able to push through. So after they use the Hyper Beam, they're stunned for a single turn here. Which makes it real easy to just launch a bunch of damage. Right. Drop a Leg Sweep there just for ease. And then kill with a Skewer next turn, right? Yeah. That'll get him. We get a dex potion, gain two dex when we use it. Another thousand cuts, sure. Wow, wrist blade. Attacks that cost zero deal three additional damage. We also don't have an energy relic available. So wrist blade is actually going to be pretty good here because it amplifies all of the shivs from infinite blades as well as our backstabs, as well as our neutralize, as well as the shivs that we get from ninja scroll. So we're going to be just killing enemies instantly on turn one. Bunch of question marks again. Got him. Ooh, yes. Pre-upgraded footwork. Lovely. We begin to fall and we will lose a strike from the deck quite happily. Alright, what do I want here? Probably just lose the max HP. Play it safe. I'm just going to be able to instantly kill one of these, so... Yep, and if I did, it would look a lot like that. Shouldn't have discarded that. That's my bad. I didn't think I was discarding. I thought I was just selecting a card for some reason. The specimen. Whenever an enemy dies, transfer any poison it has to a random enemy. Eh, I don't care about that. Lose 276 gold here in order to obtain the Red Mask Relic. Also don't particularly care about that one. So we've got to go from our lowest damage cards to our highest damage cards here because this enemy has slow, which means they take 50%, uh, sorry, 10% more damage from attacks for every card we've played this turn. Hell of a lot of damage to pitch out there on turn one. Right. Getting real 
real close to reasonable amounts. Okay. So now the enemy is actually going to be attacking for significant amounts. Although they should... Should be dead incredibly soon. Sorry, I keep having to mute the microphone to go and sneeze. Oh, dreadful. There you go. Max HP increased by 14. Thanks to the mango. More than happy. And another copy of Infinite Blades. Sure. So the Infinite Blades are providing to this deck ways to trigger effectively the extra damage from the Wrist Blade, but also extra damage from the Thousand Cuts. I'll just add a single one to my hand. Trip, apply to Vulnerable. More than happy to have that. I want some vulnerability application in this deck. Not too much, but some. In Venom, whenever an attack deals unblocked attack damage, apply one poison. More than happy to. Hell of a lot of damage on turn one. That's what this deck is really, really good at. Just turn one burst. Let's hope that actually still manages to get us through the boss. Or a Calcum, if you end a turn without block, gain six block. More than happy to have that as well. Uh, although I'll completely pass over the following. Old coin upon pickup, gain 300 gold. Uh, we do have a shop at the very end of this run as well. That's going to be really, really powerful for us. So our opening hand is a lot less powerful this time. Just because we don't have Skewer. Ugh. I'm going to play Thousand Cuts, Thousand Cuts, Trip, and then just go for the Shivs here. I need all that extra damage. We also get the block from Aura Calcum at the end of that turn because we didn't block ourselves. So I get to retain two cards at the end of the turn. Now, not only is that just nice because I get to keep some cards in hand, uh, but it's also extremely nice because... One sec. It's also extremely nice because it just means that those two cards are no longer in rotation. So my deck is effectively two cards thinner. Pennib, every 10th attack you play deals double damage. Really good for this deck. Considering how many attacks we play. Yep, do love a cleanup on turn one. I will take the upgraded dodge and roll there. <clears throat> so dodge and roll gives you six block this turn and six block next turn. But since I have footworks in the deck, in fact, I have two of them. Uh, it gives each of those three more block. So you get six more block for only three more decks. Super neat. Lovely. Told you, turn one is our domain. Another Dex Potion. Oh, I do like that. Pre-upgrading Piercing Whale as well. More than happy to, especially because we have Donu and Decker as our final boss. Uh, Paper Crane. Enemies with weak deal 40% less damage rather than 25. Extremely powerful for us, right? We'll just take that. We'll also take the Abacus whenever you shuffle your deck. Gain 6 block. We'll also take Whetstone upon pick up upgrade to random attacks. Sure. And I'll sell this fear potion in order to take the ghost in a jar, gain one intangible. So we'll only be able to take one damage from attacks on that turn. This is going to be really, 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 really good of a fight. Good lord. Okay, so I'll use the ghost in a jar this turn. So I retain my... 
perfect so far. And I'm killing Donu first because Donu buffs the rest of the team. Good lord, 20 block from a single card. Wild. Okay, so we'll neutralize the front line, then use Piercing Whale here. Looks like that's extremely effective. I mean, this hand doesn't really have many ways to be played. We just play all of the things. Just a ridiculous amount of block. A patently insane amount of block. Now, I'm not going to use my extra shiv right here because I already have pen nib and I want the pen nib to be used on skewer. Because pen nib on skewer is just going to be an instant kill. It is, actually. Do I need to do it, though? No, I'll do the dagger spray that way. Yeah. So I do the dagger spray that way instead, just so I get some extra damage on Decker as well, just to set up for later. And this is going to be a ridiculously easy fight now. Hell yeah! Managed to perfect the fight. Beautiful. Decker, I'm afraid your time is over. 25 minute run right there. Not half bad. And 982 as we take the enemy out. That's also going to get us our first unlocks. These are poison based, obviously. We've got Bane. If the enemy has poison, deal 7 damage again after the initial 7. Catalyst, double the enemy's poison, upgrades to triple. And Corpse Explosion, apply 6 poison whenever an enemy dies, deal damage equal to its max HP to all enemies. Oh. Hell yes. So then we've got the defect next episode, and then after that, ooh, beautiful. We will have unlocked the ability to go to Act 4. It's just going to be safe and lovely and a good time. Hope to see you there. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my contents on this game, past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.